guys, thanks for tuning in. It's the one and only Optobotomist coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to all of the absolutely incredible contributions from my Optobotomist Plus channel members, we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 583 one six scale cable from Deadpool 2. For the package, as you can see, you got a really nice image of the figure right there in the center with Deadpool 2 printed up down there as well as his name. And then the background with kind of this almost temporal portal looking thing with the little round sections and everything. Really kind of cool. Come around to the side, you can see you got cable, you got the Deadpool logo, you got some bullets and everything. Other side here has a continuation of the image from the front with some more bullets. And then, of course, Deadpool top section here just says Deadpool 2. Bottom section here, just says cable. Come around to the back of the package, and you've got various warnings and contact information for Hot Toys. And then as a lot of these uh, boxes are, it is a slip sleeve style cover that you can lift up on the back of the package here. You can see you got a nice image of the figure as well. Is it, Well, is that the figure? Is that... No, that, I, well, no, I, I think that's definitely the figure. I mean, it does have some controversy in terms of how good the likeness is to Josh Brolin, but I think it looks pretty good here. And then, of course, you got that little time displacement sort of element going on in the background. The side here has that really fuzzy teddy bear. Well, not really fuzzy, kind of burnt to the crisp. Uh, same thing here on that side. And then, of course, you've got the open window here in the front that fully showcases the figure as well as all of his accessories, which he does come with quite a bit but for the packaging on him that is about it so without further ado let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is and here we have cable opened up and out of its packaging and starting off first uh, he does come with his instruction sheet where you can take a look at the ways to attach the various weapons how to uh, install the batteries for his uh, light up feature how to articulate them uh, now this does have the uh, exclusive uh, shield accessory also printed on here i didn't get that version because honestly I, I i was never going to use that and i just didn't care too much about it but it also kind of shows how to take off his clothes to reveal the uh, techno organic virus that's kind of riddling his entire body which uh, i i like that but the whole clothes aspect is a, a bit of a pain in the butt now starting off first with his accessories uh, as you can see he does come with quite a bit in addition to two uh, fairly relaxed hands that you see that are on there, he comes with a right hand in a trigger finger sort of pose. And again, you can see great detail with the uh, glove and then the finger section. You also have a right fist that is done up as a actual fist. You do get more left hands that are done in the uh, mechanical sort of thing. Again, you got a trigger finger sort of position, which this looks, oh, I'm dropping it, but um, coming in to take a closer look. I mean, absolutely gorgeous detail on there. Very nice paint applications, but you can also see that the sculpt work is phenomenal. Really quite impressive. Uh, then he does have several, oh, well, I should say two, that are gloved versions of that mechanical hand. You can see you have the uh, fist on this side, and then this one here is more of like a weapon cradling sort of hand and then he also does have a more open hand here that you can see also is done without the glove and you can see a lot of that great detail all the way around i mean absolutely phenomenal how that turned out and then he comes with a lot of other uh accessories a lot of them are weapons and things of that nature but a couple smaller ones uh for example one of the key elements of this is that he lost his family both his wife and his daughter were killed by, oh, and, and I forgot the, the, the chubby guy's name. But he goes back in time to eliminate that kid before he could grow up to become a murderer. And all that was left after he went in to find his family dead was his daughter Hope's teddy bear, which you can see is charred and really quite cool. You got a little string right here because you can actually attach this to his belt, which is great, but... The detail that they put in this is quite impressive. As you can see, you have that charred section on that side, and then you have the more normal section on there, which looks really good. It's not articulated or anything, and like I said, it is just designed to kind of uh, sit there and kind of just rest on his belt, uh, kind of just hanging on that side. I mean, kind of just dangling right there. But that's a real nice uh, additional accessory, and it just is necessary because it does kind of complete his overall costume but to facilitate that time traveling section you do have his time uh displacement device uh, again coming in to take a closer look at that again great detail 
with the paint applications and the sculpt work all looks really very very nice uh, you can't really do anything with it it doesn't rotate or anything and then obviously you can just put this on his wrist and you got the little strap thing right here so we'll get that all kind of dressed up here in a bit but that's his time travel device and then staying in with some of these smaller details here's his little um i, I guess like grenade Sort of thing, both sides have a great amount of detail on their great paintwork on their sculpt. Again, very impressive all the way around, even when you look on like the edges and stuff. I mean, that looks really very nice. Uh, he had a couple of these. I uh, kind of wish he came with a couple of them here, but, you know, it's nice that they at least included one. And then we get to the part where you kind of have to dress them up, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Now, these are these look like clips, but honestly, I don't know what clip they're supposed to go to is it this i don't i'm like the instructions show that this comes out but um it really doesn't um the, these are just gonna go on his actual vest uh which is kind of a pain because the straps on there are very tight but you do get three of these that are designed to kind of just like sit inside there type of thing so you have that and then you have a lot of a couple of these very uh, Terminator-esque kind of uh, grenade, or not grenades, but giant bullet things here. You get three of them. Where'd the other one go? So you do get those uh, very, like I said, Terminator-ish. And, and then, of course, why not? Because he is from the future. So you have that. And then you have the gun that it goes with. Uh, now, obviously, you can't put those in there. Oh, well, look. You can just kind of wedge it right inside there. But you do have that little uh, hand cannon thing, which... Again, really nice, cool detail with the little straps right around there. All of this stuff is kind of grungy looking, which is really nice because he's a war-torn uh, veteran of sorts. He comes with a nice dagger, with good silver paint on there. He does come with two additional clips that I do not, or magazines, I don't know what they're called. Uh, but you got little bullets on the inside there. But literally, it doesn't work for any of his guns that I can see. So... I don't know why you have these other than to like kind of dress them up with it but you do have those and then you have a handgun here that does have one of these sections that can remove but <laughs> these don't fit in here so they're, they're not meant for this handgun i i don't i don't honestly know which gun i'll oh, put that in backwards i honestly have no idea no no that's still backwards uh what what these ones are meant for uh so but you get them that you can kind of dress them up and and then you get his bfg which is super cool looking i love how they got the detail on here showing the like the intensity on there and all that kind of stuff that's really cool and then some of these parts actually can remove so if you wanted to have him uh kind of repairing this like he did in the film you definitely could do that this section here also oh you can throw it and then this can also slide forward as well and this kind of just looks like a separate kind of cannon as well which you know what makes me wonder if uh, I, I can't get that back on there. Like, come on, there we go. Slide that on there. What, what's what's happening? What's what's going on with me? There we go. No, no, no. Oh, here. This is what I was gonna do. I was gonna see if that's the same gun. No, that's not the same one. So that's that's kind of cool. But here, let's put that back. And ta-da! Just like that, all done. But again, great detail on here. But I love how again it kind of looks like it's kind of just put together um, by whatever means necessary, whatever he has at his disposal. You got some little bits here wrapped around the uh, stock of it, I, I guess. But again, you got that wood sort of look and then a lot of extra little tiny paint details like the gold right there, some silver elements throughout. And like I said, I really like this piece right here, which was used to kind of show the, uh, the intensity of it. And then uh, for another accessory, he comes with his cloak. Uh, he wore this pretty much the entire time uh towards the end he stopped wearing this but I, I really like this this is really cool it's a real nice representation you got some wire elements in there so you can really kind of dress this up and make it look flowing and it's a uh, kind of, i mean it kind of looks like just a rain jacket of sorts uh, i i mean i i kind of wish it didn't have all these like like iron lines in there but um, i mean you could i could probably iron those out if i really wanted to but it does have a very silky feel to it so if i'm going to do that i'm going to do it on a very low setting and literally all you do is you just kind of put this over his head i mean it, it's really fairly simple just coming back here you just literally just kind of put that over and then again you can kind of take that 
put that down there and no, no, not drop them, but you can kind of create uh, more of a look that he had through the uh, majority of the film itself, which I think works perfectly. And then I guess the final accessory is going to be his uh, display base, which looks cool because you got that little time element with a lot of the flames kind of replicating where he came from in the future. Of course, it's the hexagonal shape, which looks nice. Yeah, Deadpool 2, you have the adjustable cradle. All of that works very nicely. So as you can see, he has a lot of accessories, and a lot of them, as I talked about, have to be kind of strategically placed on his body, which can be tricky to do. So, for example, these little uh, giant bullet things easily can be put inside there. Did I put that the right way? Maybe I, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that. Would, yeah, I feel like they wouldn't have that section. There. So that's gonna go there. That's gonna go there. And that one's gonna go there. I feel like they're not going in as far. Oh, maybe they are. Okay, so you're gonna have stuff like that. Uh, now you have a lot of these other things, like for example, these clips, which I have no idea where they go. That's gonna go right in that little section. So put that one there, that one, it's gonna wedge in just like that, something along those lines. You have the little holster section back here for this gun, which works nicely. You have this giant thing here, which is kind of just a, uh, I guess, le well, full leather kind of piece that you just literally kind of put that kind of through there and I, why do I feel like that's gone no won't, won't, that just kind of slipped all the way through so, <laughs> maybe you're not supposed to push it all the way through like that so there we go something like that it just kind of rests there I guess uh, but then uh, let's see where's his dagger go I don't I don't even know where the dagger goes on this guy oh wait no no I'm sure he's got a dagger holster somewhere maybe you don't I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Uh, but these pieces here, this is the part that gets like really kind of uh, pain in the butt-ish. Because you got these little straps on here that you have to try and get those to go in there. I might not even put these in because you can see that this is really very tight. So I don't know how you're going to be able to really kind of fit that through there. So I might not do it, to be totally honest with you. Uh, I'll probably just put that away uh but uh you do have that and again i am kind of wondering why he doesn't have a actual um thing for his little dagger i feel like he should uh, but then you're gonna take this and this is going to uh just strap onto his little uh, belt right here so let's get this guy all dressed up and then we'll come in to take a closer look at the figure because realistically i should show you what's underneath all of this now, coming in to take a closer look at him, I did actually decide to kind of armor him up with all of his uh, extra accessories. And I will tell you that this system on the vest is a giant pain in the butt. On the back of these are little clips, but instead of a straight piece of metal that goes down making it easier to slide down, it actually has like a hook section that I, I guess is meant to kind of help keep it in place. But because of how tight these little straps are, it makes it very difficult. So what I actually did was I used his knife to kind of just go in there and just kind of twist it a little bit just to pull those away slightly. Uh, I did kind of damage mine right here. You can see that piece here uh, just kind of separated a little bit. But uh, the whole section around the back has those little kind of strap things so I could very easily attach the little uh, teddy bear to it. But... I just wanted to kind of show you, but it is a pain in the butt. Now, looking at the likeness, I really like it. Some people think that it's a little bit soft. The only thing that I would probably say that I think I would like to see more is maybe a little bit more facial hair. And, I mean, you can kind of see it on there. He does have it, but a little bit more kind of dirt in there just to kind of really, I guess, bring it home. The hair looks fantastic. You got a really nice shave texture going on here with the rest of his hair. And you can see that there are some nice kind of gray elements in there, kind of showing that he is an older guy. Of course, that scar on his eye is fantastic. See, he's got a slightly open mouth, which looks good. Now, he does have a light-up feature. You remove his head, 
And with all this stuff on here, I'm now a little bit nervous. Uh, but you can see that you have this section right here. You turn the light on. Get that uh, turned on. There we go. And you can see that's really bright. And then you bring this down. And you have a, a light up eye effect. Uh, you can really only see it when he's looking at you straight on. It's not a, a bad light. And because of the lights that, or the I should say the batteries that Hot Toys gives you, if that you see leave that on for too long that's going to really kind of fade but um it's not a bad effect i i think it was cool uh to include it but one thing that i also noticed and people kind of complained about this is the overall neck you know what, what, what's, come on why am i there we go uh the neck on them i feel looks a little bit too thin that's probably my biggest complaint i i definitely think that proportionally he looks okay but that neck really could be bulked up a lot more. It's not that it looks too long or anything like that. I just think that it's very narrow and it kind of gives the impression that his head is a little bit big, I guess. Which is something that people complained about. But I think it's mostly the neck. So I mean, I'm like, when you're looking at it from that side, I mean, it's not too terribly bad. But when you're having a straight on kind of thing really does look very very thin uh, you can also see the techno organic virus coming around his neck going down to his back obviously going down to his arm i'm going to take all of this off and i'll show you the actual body of it i don't think anybody's really going to display him with this shirt off but it is nice that they added that detail throughout the entire figure but again, you can see the way that the vest is done up. You got the bullets here, the vest, everything. You can see you got this really nice t-shirt. You got a sleeve with a very uh, tight but elastic material, which uh, does keep it nicely tight to the body. Come around to the other side, though, what I like is that this arm, the sleeve is actually kind of tattered and ripped, which looks really cool. Leading to that arm, that is spectacular looking. This is an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous piece you can see all the different pistons the i guess mechanical replacements to his muscles all of it absolutely spectacular looking and the joint here really does seamlessly connect the two sections which looks really good obviously i do have the gloved hand on there so you can see how that looks the other side here uh, it is a single jointed elbow, which does kind of make uh, it look a little bit off. Uh, you do have that ugly joint right there that kind of is exposed. I don't know why they can't tampograph that or something with skin texture just to kind of make that look a little bit better. But it's just done in a flesh tone, which doesn't look terrible. But when you have all this texture on the rest of the arm and then you come to that and that's just a smooth round disc in there definitely draws your eye to it uh, i did put on his time device on his hand you can see it just kind of wraps around the wrist itself looking at the belt gorgeous uh great detail but it can't be removed which then comes to a problem which we'll talk about with the t-shirt and you can see that it's all untucked right now which looks kind of messy but there's not really a lot that you can do about it once you untuck it and i think most people will probably take the shirt off at least once to kind of see the uh, the detail underneath you're basically going to ruin the way that this looks because you can't take the belt off you can't take the pants down and you can't re-tuck that shirt in unless you take something like i don't know like, like, like that and just kind of like tuck it down but it's not going to look very good at least once you do that so uh be aware you might not want to do it just to kind of keep that look pretty good but also you got like the string right here which is going to annoy me you can see his uh holster sections you got the one for the gun back here his little cannon section let me come back a little bit and then you can see you got some clips on that side that stit there or magazines whatever they're called i i don't know i don't know anything about guns you have the teddy bear that can uh drape right in the back section of his belt and then great camo pants or i mean well they're not really camo but they are definitely militaristic looking i kept looking on here to see if maybe there's a spot where you can put his dagger, but I, I really don't see one. And, I mean, it, it it doesn't really matter, honestly. But it just seems weird that they wouldn't have put something like that on there. But it is what it is. And then you come down to the boots. Gorgeous detail. They are a split cut. And one thing that I really nice or I like on here is that you can see the rivets and everything for it at the top section going all the way up. So you know where, like, this needs to be oriented. And then it comes down here to the 
actual boot itself. So you get a full range of motion, even when you look at the bottom. Sculpt the detail on the bottom that you probably would never have needed to notice, but it's there. So now uh, for actually removing his uh, shirt, I, I am going to show you how to do it. First, you come around here to the back. This whole section here, this is all Velcroed. You're just going to lift this up like so, and then pull this off just like that. And then that will flop around, and literally you can just kind of shimmy this around. I got all this stuff on here, so I'm just trying to be careful with it. Hit the camera, and that can very easily just come up and over his head. And then again, uh, for the shirt, easiest way to kind of just put the arms up for that and then untuck and just pull the shirt up get it over the arms because i've already kind of ruined the look on it so it doesn't really matter so just kind of do that come on you would think i would know how to take a, a shirt off but apparently i don't oh easier to take the head off as well so remove that and then just kind of slide this all the way up and over those arm sections and keep doing it and go like do the I'm gonna I'm, I'm trying to do the Justin thing and it, it, it doesn't work all right okay and uh, so this, this looks amazing. It, it, it really really does. Uh, you can see that the techno organic virus really has kind of went all over his entire body and it's spectacular the replacement of the musculature by the actual mechanical sections looks very cool the actual tearing of the flesh looks really nice the way that it kind of looks like it's just ripping from the body is absolutely spectacular you can see it coming up here in the neck and you come around to the back and you can see his little spinal column right there all being replaced by that mechanicalness which again great detail with the kind of layering of different things now the part that i have a problem with is when you do take that shirt off other than the fact that taking the shirt off is a giant pain in the butt to do um well not really taking it off putting it back on is kind of the pain in the butt but he really does have a very thin look to him uh, it's not that the the sculpt isn't good or anything it's just the bulk is smaller than it really should be and when you scale it down to one six scale small little variations in terms of the sizing and proportions really do have a massive impact on the overall look of the body and that's definitely the case here uh, josh is not a overly massive guy but he does have some bulk to him, and scaling it down like that really does kind of take away from what he did. And then you really do kind of see the, the thinness of the neck as well. It's a cool look. It, it really is. And like I said, I think that most collectors will try doing that at least once. The problem, though, the, is that you cannot get these pants to come down anymore. Uh, they don't detach or anything of that nature, so you can't actually tuck the shirt back in easily and you can see that the pants are fairly bulky uh, so i don't i don't know why they couldn't have made it where you could uh, like detach the actual belt section and have like a velcro piece where you can kind of open it to really get that shirt tucked in there because as it is it's it's gonna end up with at least with me always now being untucked which isn't gonna look terrible uh, but I would prefer to have the cleaner look with the, the shirt tucked in. So let's uh, do a, a quick, uh, again, I'm going to try doing that. I'm going to get him to stand here and let's try doing the, the Justin's collection thing and go. And as you can see, uh, it, it's, it's, it doesn't look terrible, uh, but it would be better if you could tuck it in. And the only way that I can really think of doing it is like i said just taking something like this but it's not even gonna like lay down very flat and just like stuffing it down I, I i'm not a fan of that honestly that's really unfortunate that they didn't do that in a way i mean i guess you could kind of yeah like, like i said you're just kind of pulling it the pants away and just kind of tucking them down but i don't know uh, i'll probably just leave it like that to be totally honest with you 
and I, that's really unfortunate because, as I said, I think collectors are going to want to take that uh, shirt off at least one time. I don't, I, I don't think a lot of people are going to be displaying him uh, at all uh, with, with, with. I mean, they might, but I, I, I can't really imagine that they're going to. I think that it's going to be more of a situation where you're going to have the vest on. You're going to have his uh, little uh, cloak or, I, I guess, rain jacket, I, poncho, I, I suppose. It, it, it looks kind of more like a poncho, I guess. Uh, but getting this on there, again, then you take this, bring this over. You Velcro that to it. Usually, uh, when I when I took it off, it was kind of on an angle. So again, like kind of straighten that up. Uh, this was kind of on an angle when you were doing it, and then you just bring this back down. You'll notice that there is a little bit of a magnet here. Bring this back down, and that is where you take his gun and magnetize it. Uh, it it stays on there okay. I I I do like watching Justin's collection videos. I don't know how he got that and was able to shake it because that doesn't stay well at all there i mean if you're just gonna have it standing there it kind of holds it there but I, I i again i i don't i don't know how we did it especially when you take uh like i said that little poncho let's get that out of the way take the poncho bring that over like i i do i think the think that this is going to be like kind of the preferred look for a lot of people so just kind of stretching this around, getting the little teddy bear there, set that down. I do love how you have the wire in there so you really can kind of pull this and do kind of whatever you want with it. I mean, that, that just looks cool doing it like that. And then you have this extra material that now creates a little bit more uh, of a gap between the magnet and it. I mean, it. Yeah, Justin, how did you do that, bro? Uh, but, I mean, it, when, when you get him looking like this, uh, especially since this kind of hides the thinness of his neck, this guy does really look uh, quite impressive, uh, in my opinion. But overall, the figure is really very good. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. There are definitely aspects of this that I feel like they could have done better at, especially considering how long this figure took to come out. Accessory-wise, I think they did a terrific job. Granted, I, I, I do kind of wish that there was a place to store his dagger, uh, maybe even some place to store his little, like, grenade mine thing. But we never really saw that in the film, so I guess they would have had to have taken liberties in terms of the costume. So I appreciate that it's as accurate as it possibly can, but that also does mean that you're going to have some accessories that are just going to be more than likely not displayed on his body and probably put back in the box. But that does happen from time to time. While a lot of people don't like his likeness, I think it's actually really good. Is it their best? Again, definitely not. But without a doubt, I see Josh Brolin as Cable when I look at this guy. I also really love the fact that they went full on in terms of the detail for his entire body. However, that does create a bit of a problem. While the detail that is really put into the body is outstanding, seeing it is a difficult task. Which leads me to some of the parts that I really do feel they could have done better. Number one, the pants. I, I, I do not understand why they couldn't have made the belt removable, or at least they like, have it buttoned up and be able to kind of slide down so that you can properly tuck in that shirt after you pull it up to check out that amazing detail. But that also leads into the fact that his body does seem a little bit undersized. If you were to blow him up to a full-size man, it probably wouldn't be too noticeable. But here in six scale form, even a minor reduction into his size really does stand out, such as his neck which is very thin, and then makes his head look kind of big on him. When you have it like that, though, it doesn't look bad. It, I mean, truthfully, it just kind of looks like a floating head right there, but you kind of hide that thinness. But you also see it in the rest of his body as well. His arms are a little bit more thin, so too is his chest. It's not terrible, and because I am not going to be taking the shirt off and really displaying it without his cloak on, 
it doesn't bother me that much. But as I said, when you put that much detail into the uh, techno-organic virus throughout his body, people are going to want to look at it. So things like making the shirt easier to put back on would be a huge improvement. And then when you do take that shirt off, you're left looking at a body that does look a little undersized. In general, he's a great figure, and he's going to look terrific with any display. I no longer have any Deadpool figures. Honestly, I got rid of him because he was just by himself, and I, I really never expected this figure to come out. And that's just too small of a display. I didn't want him to take up one entire shelf. So now I'm left with this guy just by himself. But what I have decided to do, and I guess I could have done this with Deadpool as well, is display Cable with my third-party version of Logan as he appeared in the Logan film. So it'll be a nice display of uh, kind of X-Men characters. If you're a Deadpool fan or X-Men fan, I think that this guy is going to look great in the display. And even though he does have some shortcomings, I do still recommend him. But uh, beyond that, guys, that's about it. There's my look at the new Hot Toys 1-6 scale cable from Deadpool 2. If you'd like to add this guy to your collection, he is available right now over at Big Bad Toy Store. So for that, I'll put a link right down there in the video description where you can head on over there and check out availability on this guy as well as the rest of the wide range of Hot Toy figures. And as always, guys, please remember that the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you later.